Greetings, my name is Vincent. In this episode, let's paint our final set of Forge World resin created for Adeptus Titanicus in the form of the Silo set, here at Bunker 6. The first stage was to prime the model in Ace Hardware Grey Primer. In the original artwork, the silos looked like they were a slight off blue grey, so I used Arctic Blue by Scale Color in this instance. Due to the fact that these models are going to have an oil wash added over the top of them, something that can be quite important is doing pre-shading and pre-highlighting, because the oil wash will be layered over the top of these, and will create an interesting effect that isn't as easy to create once the oil wash has already been laid down. Once the ivory highlight was dry, I then moved on to doing the darker shades that are going to be around the bottom of the silos to imply dirt and grime buildup. The reason why I do it in this order is for the purposes of cleaning, it's much easier to follow a dark colour from a light colour than the other way around. The trick here is to do a lighter grey followed with your darker grey. I wouldn't ever just go straight in with a very dark colour if you don't have to. Transitioning from a lighter to a darker colour is always going to give you more natural and realistic results. Hopefully, like you can see here. That was as much highlighting and shading as I needed to do before I moved on to doing the oil wash, but before we do the oil wash we always have to seal the model with at least a semi-gloss varnish. I decided to use the general oil wash that I've been using for all of my terrains so far just to give things a little bit more cohesion. In this case it's Abtelong's 502 Burnt Umber Oil Wash. Just used a little bit of thinners and then made sure that when I applied everything I was putting it on quite thinly so there wasn't too much oil build up making drying times much more extended. The next stage was to clean up the oil wash. It's a very simple process but it just takes some time. Get some Sansador or whatever thinners that you're using, add it to a paintbrush or q-tip and start in a controlled manner to pull away some of the oil wash, making sure that the thinners doesn't go where you don't want it to go, pulling off oils where you'd like them to stay. This is a very simple model to clean up, you just want to make sure that you keep the oils in those crevices, and you pull everything off of most flat surfaces. And now you get to see my pre-shading and pre-highlights cutting through, now the oil wash is coming off. Out of all of the terrain pieces that I've had to paint on camera so far, this has definitely been the simplest. After about 20 minutes of cleanup, it was a case of moving on to sealing all of this work with some ultramat varnish. Aside from it sealing all the work, ultramat varnish is used to take all that luster and shine off of the oil wash to make things look more natural. On this very simple model we have a few details to work on, I'm just blocking out some areas in black paint which I know are going to have silver metallics going over the top. I much prefer painting silver metallics over black. And if I paint carefully enough, I don't have to worry about adding in any shade over the pipes because there's already black in the contours of the pipes. With the pipes blacked out, I then moved on to painting the keyboard console just below the portal on the silo. One slight deviation that I made away from the original artwork was to make the portal look a teensy bit more interesting. In the original artwork, it's kind of greyed out. I wanted to make it look like there was something inside the silo, something of green interest and so we're going to be making it look a little bit more turquoise. Once the initial turquoise base coat had been put down for the portal I just wanted to make sure that the rim of the portal was looking nice and tidy so I just blacked that out too. I then turned my attention back to the keyboard console where I just wanted to have a little bit more definition and depth so I added a non-oil wash over the top of the buttons. With the keyboard console definition added, I went back to the portal. And this is where we're going to actually start adding some highlights into the portal to give it a bit more of a reflective quality. Just to break it down even further, all I'm really doing is emulating the same kind of painting technique that you'd use to paint a lens on, say, a Space Marine or a Terminator helmet. Now I wanted to paint the brightest colour that I was going to have on this portal. I wanted to make it feel like the silo had some kind of bizarre glowing substance in it, and the brightest part was going to be settled at the bottom of the silo, and that's why you kind of see what I'm doing here. 
Once I was happy with all the highlights that I was adding into the portal glass, I then wanted to add some shade back in, so I moved my attention to the top of the portal, where I started pushing up black paint into the archway, and then finished off with a tiny dab of white paint, which implies this has a reflective quality like glass normally would. We can start adding some highlights back in over the top of that oil wash now everything is dried and sealed. We're not going to go too crazy, we're just going to do things pretty mellow here with some ivory highlights and some light grey highlights, just where it feels appropriate. Aside from very bright highlights, as I mentioned a minute ago, we're just adding some light grey highlights in as well, really just to clean up a little bit more of the oil wash where it's been sitting on some of those raised ridges where we wouldn't want or expect that oil wash to be sitting. The best way to get these highlights back in on those ridges is just doing a very simple rudimental edge highlight with the side of your brush. I then turn my attention back to the console screen that's just sitting below the portal. We're just adding a base coat of turquoise first. I then mixed in a little bit of white paint with the turquoise just to create some of the images that are going to be shown on the screen. And if you make any mistakes, you can always just go back in with the previous color to sharpen up the new highlight lines that you've created. And the last thing that we have to add to the screen to give it that glassy effect is just some white paint, just to give it that reflective quality that you'd expect. Now in previous videos, I always like to mention how I don't use white and use ivory instead, but when it comes to something like glass that has to be highly reflective, that is when white will be used as an exception. With the majority of my base tones finished, I decided to move on to the metallics that were required along with the washes that would go with those metallics. I'm just picking out the grills and some of the pipes that I wanted to be in silver just to create a little bit more visual interest, and then we'll go in and dull them down a little bit with some wash afterwards. Normally I would use something like Noln Oil when it comes to shading metallics in the colour of silver. But in this instance, I went with Agrax Earthshade, so it matched the tone of the oil wash a little better. Now I decided to add a little bit of weathering slash chipping to the model that wasn't in the original paint job, but I just wanted it to still feel a little bit dirtier and grimier than the original artwork. And this is of course a step that you can skip entirely. If you are skipping the chipping stage, you don't need to do this stage either, but this is just adding a little bit of definition and contrast to the ivory chips that were done with the sponge, just going in with a little bit of black outlining to create the illusion of depth. Now this is just assumption and speculation on my part, but I think that Games Workshop slash Forge World used the exact same transfer that I'm about to use here for the silo, which is just this number six stencil. I'm just gonna go through the normal process that I go through using distilled water, making sure that the transfer is nice and slippery on the backing paper before I apply it to the model itself, making sure that I dampen the surface of the model before I apply the transfer, and that transfer does not leave the backing paper until it is directly above the model it is being applied to. And one little extra step I like to do is just seal the transfer with some varnish, gloss or matte, just to make sure that it is completely secure. One thing I like to do just to make transfers feel a little bit more part of their environment is either add some weathering or some washes or all of the above, just to make sure that the transfer doesn't feel like it's just been stuck on top of the model. So it's just a couple of dabs of oil and then just dragging this brush down to make the oil look like staining over the transfer just to sit it back a little bit. And the last model that we have to paint in this Adeptus Titanicus terrain range is this rather steampunk four-pronged domed silo. Now I don't know how the original paint job was done but we're going to try our best anyway. Put down a base coat of Rhinox Hide as you can see here, followed up with some shading of black just around some of the edges and in some of the areas where dirt would accumulate. This is once again a pre-shade before we go in with our oil wash. Even with just these two paint stages, it's already starting to look something like oil rubbed bronze, if you're familiar with that when it comes to cabinet handles or faucets. Now we're just going to build up the metallics that are going to be cutting through the oil wash when the light catches them, 
and we're going to start with decayed metal. In the original artwork, the silo seemed quite pitted with damage, so we're going to just emulate some of that with this very bright silver. Just making sure we don't have too much paint on our sponges we're pressing down here because we don't want to create big splotches. Aside from the super shiny silver pitting on the, the silo, I wanted to add in some rich brass pitting too, just to give a little bit of variation to the surface. As soon as the oil wash is added over the top, it's going to create a little bit of uniformity and homogeneity with all the layers that are happening underneath, so I wasn't too concerned about the variation in tone. And before we add in the oils, we're going to seal the model with some semi-gloss varnish. Now it's a Bunker 6 first, I finally used a different colour other than burnt umber for my oil washes. We're using black now. I was a little bit apprehensive because this was very cheap oil paint, but it turned out just fine. I'm not sure if that's because of the thinners or actually there's not too much difference between oil paints. But I just used a variety of different abrasives from makeup brushes to regular dry brushes and some sponges to start pulling off some of that oil paint, creating some different textures and tones. I was really happy with how the cleanup process went. My attention was mainly targeted at the top of the dome and the top of the pipes because I'm assuming that's where the least amount of grime would be accumulating. Just softly working with a brush and then with Q-tips and whatever seemed to pull off oil paints in a predictable manner that was repeatable. That seemed to be the most important thing. You can do a combination of stippling or wiping. It really doesn't matter as long as things look and feel realistic. You can always try again with oil washes if you make mistakes. Just reapply the oil wash, wait for it to dry, and start wiping and stippling all over again. Now because there was a lot of shiny elements happening on this model from the metallics to the oils, I did three layers of matte varnish on this model. All the big chunky stuff on this model is finished, now it's just a case of moving on to the details. Thankfully this is a very simple model, so the detailing that we're going to be doing is just on the rims and edges of the grills and things like that. Very minute stuff, so this shouldn't take too much longer. Although a lot of the highlighting and shading was done prior to the oil wash, the one thing about oil washes of course is it will really start to dull things down. So I turned my attention back to adding some of the highlights back in, while making sure that some of the previous oil wash highlights were left well alone. We want to make sure that things feel at their brightest at the tops of surfaces, and the most dull and grimy parts are at the lower sections of the model. Just as you'd expect in real life. Grime, debris is all going to build up on the lower parts of the model, and areas on the top are most likely to be hit with weathering and things like that, so they're most likely to be the shiniest part. Another Bunker 6 first was to experiment with rust pigments in a very specific way. Normally I'd use pigment just by dabbing it dry onto a model, but in this instance I tried to create a solution of rust pigment and water and apply it in areas and then once it dried, hopefully it would create the illusion of pooling rust around the model. Now the thicker I made the pigment paste, the more like rust it looked. But I also like the fluidity of the more dilute solution and it allowed me to spread it around the nooks and crannies a lot easier. So there's a little bit of mix and matching going on throughout this entire process. Water is most likely going to be draining quickly from the top of the model and accumulating in the lower sections of the model. So the thicker paste was added to the bottom where water would be stagnating and accumulating and the thinner solution was applied to the top of the model. A lot of the pigment worked quite well, but there were some issues where the pigment literally looked like it was sitting on top of the dome rather than being part of its environment. So one way to alleviate this issue was by adding just a little bit of Agrax Earthshade over the top of some of the pigment sections, just so it sat back a little bit and seemed a bit more part of the scene. This didn't need to be applied to every single part of the pigment paste, just where it felt the most necessary and least distracting. One of the final elements that needs to be emulated from the original artwork is the smattering of verdigris. If you're not familiar, verdigris is a type of copper oxidization that can be found on elements such as the Statue of Liberty. 
it has a turquoise appearance. I'm going to be using an official GW technical paint that recreates this verdigris effect. With the verdigris dry, it was a case of moving on to the transfer. Sadly, unlike the initial silo, I didn't have the exact transfer that was used in the original artwork. I'm not entirely sure what was used here, so I improvised and found something that seemed to do the job just as well. Once the transfer was dry, it was a case of thinking about how we're going to get this transfer to feel part of the dome rather than a decal stuck on top of it. So we have a few effects that we're going to be doing next. And as per usual, I like to seal my transfers to the model with a little bit of varnish. If you want to be really sure, you can actually use some gloss varnish and then hit it with some matte varnish afterwards. But I just go with matte varnish and it seems to do the job just fine. The first step we're going to do to make the transfers sit back a little bit is just add a little bit of chipping. Just to the sides, I try to avoid hitting the six too much because I wanted that to be the brightest point, just to create a little bit of dimension to the transfer. Another Bunker 6 first, I'm using a paint I've never used before, and it is AK Interactive's Deep Shades. It's kind of like non-oil but thicker, almost like a contrast paint, but I didn't want to use it as a wash or a contrast paint, kind of just as a shade through an airbrush. As you can see, I've just added it to the 2 and the 5, and leaving the 6 as bright as possible, as I said, just to create a little bit of depth and dimension. I'm very happy with the end result. And there we have it, the Adeptus Titanicus Forge World resin kit of two silos created in the 8mm scale. Hope you enjoyed the episode and maybe learned something. If you're new here, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, thank you for your ongoing viewership. Until next time, I'm Vincent signing off from here at Bunker 6.